Hey guys, welcome back to the shop for another week of SNS. And this week for our main content for the video, we're going to go ahead and finish out the three hydraulic cylinders that I shared in the last video. We've got the we got all the seals in, we got bearings in, and I even have a new install tool made by Kit King that I wanted to share with you also. So we use that to help install the seals and the glands, and we get all those uh, cylinders back together and, and get them done, okay? So I do have a couple of things here that I want to share with you also. We've got a new tool, and we got something else here that was uh, something that was suggested by a bunch of you guys out there for me to try out. So I bought one, and and uh, I'm going to talk to you about that and uh, share you share with you my thoughts on that. Uh, but before we get to that, I want to make sort of an announcement to uh, everybody that watches me. There's a lot of you guys that watch me every single week because you tell me you do, and these Saturday night specials are a, are a big part of your your uh, Saturday evenings. So in about a month from now, whenever you're watching this, I'm going to be taking a little bit of time off of work. Uh, because I have to. I've got to take some time off work and I'm going to be having a medical procedure done on me. Uh, the, I'd rather keep everything kind of personal. It is kind of a personal issue. I don't really uh, want to address everything out there in the public airways, should I say, but it's nothing that's life-threatening, I'll say that. It's just something that I need to get done and I've been planning this for a very long time and I'm going to uh, finally have it done. Uh, but I'm going to have to have some downtime and recovery whenever I do this. So it is now a planned thing. I'll be off of work for probably at least four weeks. And so I'm not going to be able to come out here and do a lot of work either. So the, the first couple of weeks is probably going to be, you know, just relaxing and uh, recovering, healing and that kind of stuff. And then maybe after that, I might be able to do a little bit of light duty, you know, talk to you, the camera and that kind of stuff. But my plan is, as far as um, videos go, is I've got, I've already got a couple of jobs filmed that I'm trying to hold out on and, and not share two and three videos a week right now because I'm trying to kind of stretch that content out a little bit all the way up until I have to take off of work. And I still have ongoing projects that I'm continuing to work on. So my plan is... If everything works out is that I'll have plenty of video content that I can continue to share through that that time period and it'll, it'll look like I won't even be off of work you know so that's my goal anyway so I'm probably gonna stop uploading two and three videos a week and I only do that when I can anyway and uh, we may go back to one video for now uh, a Saturday video because that's when everybody likes to tune in and uh, keep the video content going but uh, I am excited and nervous about this that's coming up but everything's gonna be fine and uh, I'll, I'll be a better person for it whenever it's all over with okay so I just want to kind of share that with all you guys and I, I want to continue my video content like I always do so we got projects I've actually got a shaper project that I've done that I've been kind of holding on to that footage uh, because I want to finish out stuff I'm doing like these hydraulics and I've got the welding cart project I've got uh, I'm making videos for that that's going to be coming out and I also got my new table over here that I want to get started on so uh, I'm trying to get I've got some machining that I actually want to do for the table before I start doing any of the welding and that kind of stuff so I'm hoping I can get some of that video captured and and that way I've got plenty of content that I can share with you guys while I'm laid up in my recliner relaxing. <laughs> All right. So enough about that. I got a couple of things to show you. We're going to get to that and we're going to rebuild some hydraulic cylinders. All right. So a few weeks ago, I shared some new socks that I bought. Uh, Dan Post is the brand. And I had a bunch of guys recommend this right here. Darn tough socks made in Vermont. So... I decided since so many people thought these were good socks that I would buy a couple of pair and that's what I've done. I've uh, just got these in uh, yesterday so I've got I've got the first pair on now. They send a they send you a sticker with it too right there. So these are made in USA up in Vermont and they guarantee them for life that's one of the things that everybody was bragging about was that 
guaranteed for life. If, if you wear them out or wear a hole in them or whatever, you can send these back to them and they'll send you a new pair. So these are the work socks. These are the over the calf. Uh, Paul Bunyan was, uh, was this one right here. That's what I picked out. So anyway, I wanted to share that because I didn't know about these and a bunch of guys spoke up and said, hey, try the darn tough. I like them. They have all different types of socks. So they have a whole work line and then they have other lines of, of socks as well, you know, for uh, people that run and, you know, just all kind of different things. So I'm going to try these things out and maybe we'll come back and and revisit this and I'll because I, I had people that said hey let me know what you think of those socks so so far so good I've got the first pair on my feet now and they are very comfortable so uh, right now there there's no gripes I would say that I did wish that these were a little bit taller because the damn post socks over the calf are taller than these and they go almost up to your knees where this one doesn't quite go up that high so I was already getting kind of used to the damn post socks but we're going to give these a try, okay? So this is the new tool that I purchased for the shop right here. This is an Aloris BB5 bar, uh, boring bar. This is an inch and a half diameter. And, of course, you have your 90-degree tool on one side and your 45-degree tool on the other. These are my favorite boring bars for tool bits. I already have an inch and a quarter, and at work I have three-quarter one, inch and a quarter inch and a half and the two inch and the two inch is a monster bar it looks like this only it's two inch and it's longer but the reason why i went ahead and invested in this bar right here is uh, okay this is inch and a half also and this was given to me by one of my viewers out there and this was setting up to start using it when i had a failure this guy right here which was the holder that was sent with this bar when I was tightening it up it broke you can see see the crack right there it just it snapped so I put too much a-bomb torque on that what's really surprised me because these these tool holders like this you know the Armstrong and the Williams those things are tough man and I've never seen one break like this before so I don't know what this brand is this does say a extra three and a half and that even looks like that could be a date stamped on there it looks like 7 10 31 so i don't know if that's how old that thing is or not 1931 that thing would be old but it is very hard so what i would like to do for another uh, video project i want to attempt to fix this guy right here and see if i can uh, save it and put it back to use what we can do is obviously take the bolts out and let's just do that real quick okay so what we might be able to do is v all this back out or just v it out v this out and i'll turn a carbon bushing that will go in here and we will clamp that thing back together or space it like it should be and braze it back together I, I would braze this i would not tig braze it i would braze it so that you can get plenty of heat in this thing and, and get that brass to flow in there like it's supposed to so i don't know if it'll work but i feel like that it would anyway you know so anyway that's uh that's something that i plan on doing on the channel here i don't know when but this it is a project that i would like to do and I wanted to have this boring bar right here. This one is a little bit more difficult to, to use this older style because this is a screw on cap right here. So I just like the lower style that's got the set screws in the end. So I wanted to have a new bar for this holder that I'm hopefully gonna be able to fix. If I cannot fix this if, or if it fails after I fix it, what we may do then is see about making one just building the our own uh, by the way if any of you guys have one of these out there that you'd like to sell me i am looking for these not just inch and a half but other sizes as well these are extremely hard to find i look on ebay and i and i hardly ever see any on there so i am looking for these to round out a nice tooling collection for the shaper so anyway that's what i wanted to share about this this is also going to be used in a lathe as well my 
uh, multi-fix holders. One of them will hold an inch and a half boring bar. So this is gonna serve as a boring bar for the lathes as well, okay? All right, guys, we're gonna go ahead and get started back on these three hydraulic cylinders for Fernando. I've got the seals in, so we're gonna start the reassembly on these things. I've got a new tool that I'm gonna share with you. And uh, more of the same that I showed before, we're gonna install the O-rings, the backups, the seal, and the wiper. And then we also have a piston seal to install as well. But I got something I want to share with you, and this is something we're going to kind of go over. All right, this is a new kit that I just recently got in. This is from uh, Kit King USA. And what these are, these are, <clears throat> these are tools that are designed to help you install U-cup seals like this, uh, also known as poly seals, U-seals, rod seals, but any kind of seal that's in the shape, the profile of a U. Those are your two sealing lips right there. So I got a few. These are just some examples that I got from work out of our uh, spare parts bin. Just some Lucy's right there. And we'll use these to kind of demonstrate how the tools work. And we'll go ahead and open it up so you can see. So this kit comes with four different sizes. And you can go from, I want to say, three quarters of an inch all the way up to six inch or maybe about six and a half inch all right with the with this tool here it's also got a block that you can uh, screw down to the workbench or wherever you need to to help hold the tools while you uh, set it for the seal we'll flip it over to the back because it actually shares the uh, sizes right there so let me see so it goes up to six and a half inches and for the metric guys watching it gives the metric sizes there as well what is that? So it's uh, uh, five millimeter all the way up to 165 millimeter. All right, and then that's a demonstration of, of how it works. Now I have used some tools like this before. We got some like this at work. It's not the same brand, not the same style. These actually have the addition of this plastic bushing in the middle that helps hold these things and, and with this little block right there so we'll just pull this one out since it's a little bit easier to see but it's got this plastic that's I guess molded around these bars and it kind of stiffens it up helps hold everything in place so let's give this a demonstration I'll show you how this is how this works and I had shared a picture of this on Instagram and there was quite a few guys that seem to kind of show some interest in it and you can buy this on uh, Amazon they sell it on Amazon so I'll have a link in the video description where you can go to this and purchase this if you you know if you're interested at kicking USA we'll use this big yellow seal right here as our example since it's easy to see and this is I believe it's for a four and a quarter inch rod and it's got a 3 8 cross section to it so this is a pretty stout seal right here and these are the kind of seals that are very difficult to get inside of the gland there's a lot of rod seals that are pretty flexible they're more they just feel more like a, a, a rubber o-ring so some are easy but these nylons like this are they can be very difficult to install so I'm assuming that you just use one of these holes right here. I don't know, man. It doesn't, it doesn't tell you how this is supposed to be mounted in which hole, but I do know that it's pushing the rubber grips up, no matter if you put it in one of the small ones, but these, it kind of flops around some. So I'm going to use that hole right there, all right? We're going to stick the seal on just like so, just like this. And... So the holder, the block, is designed so that you can use both of your hands and hold the seal steady and then twist it around. So we're going to go ahead and give that a shot. And this is uh, it's a little awkward, but here we go. So you got to switch hands. And we're going to twist this thing around just like that. And this thing will kind of move around on you, you know, see how it's trying to go back. But once you squeeze it together like this, now you can stick this down in your rod gland and put this side into the groove. So we're going to pretend that we're sticking it in there. 
and just let go of that. And that'll be installed in your in your groove. Now, don't worry about that uh, deformation of the seal. That is going to just straighten itself right on out once the rod is going through here and it's and it's forcing it to uh, round itself back out. All right. So there's that one right there. Let's let's look at a smaller one right here. All right. See this seal right here. This is very similar to what we're going to be installing in these, these rod glands right here. This is a loaded seal. You have a rubber expander that is pressed in the center of that lip. That's a, it's actually, this particular one is a quad ring. So it's a square shaped O-ring. And it's pushed down in there and that creates a very, very strong lip that is always pressing against your uh, sealing surface there. I don't know if this one will work, we'll give it a shot. See, you got to hold it so it doesn't try to pop off there, just like that. So you just you just keep a hold of it and stick it down in your gland, and then release it, just like that. All right. That would make that installing that one a whole lot easier. You got one more right here. This is another nylon type of seal there it is stick it down in the gland and release it and this plastic here is uh, designed to help keep from marring up and scratching the inner bore of the gland while you got this down in there so the ones that I've used before that we have at work do not, does not have this it's just a I believe it's just a, another metal rod in the middle there. It holds it together. All right, so that's how that works right there. Okay, so let's go ahead and do it for the real thing now. This is one of the small rod glands that has an inch and a quarter bore. And then, so we got our seals. This is the one for an inch and a half. It's our P-seal. All these are bought from Hercules Hydraulics. All right, this, these are the seals right there that we're going with. There's our P-seal. And as I said, it's got the rubber, it's got the rubber expander in there. And th this style is, is actually an O-ring that's pressed down in the, in the seal there. All right, so we're going to use our medium-sized tool. And what we'll do, I'm trying to give you guys a shot of this as well. So we'll... We'll put our gland right there. So you just got to make sure that you're going to go the right way with the lip. This is the shortest distance, so we're going to we're going to try going down from the outside face. Okay. All right. Now we have it completely collapsed. And <laughs> see if we can get it in there. It's still, it's so close. All right, there we go. There we go. All right. Well, that did not work as planned. All right, I just popped it in there from the bottom. All right. Just verifying. It's in there. I'm not sure what that pop was. It sounded like this. But we got it in there. We're going to go ahead and stick our wiper in there. There's our part number for our wiper. Now the wiper I'm just going to stick in there by hand. It's, this is usually easy enough. It's uh, This style is pretty flexible, see? Just like that. 
Just pop it in there. Okay. Probably didn't catch that, but it I was able to push it with my thumb and it and it popped in there. Alright, we're gonna finish this out. We got some O-rings. Let's see, that's the inch and a half. We got some O-rings and some backups. And one of these, all we had in stock was Viton, so I got a couple Vitons. Rod. Okay, well that's everything right there. These are for the actual piston O-rings right there. All right, so we got our backup, 575 backup. Easy enough to just snap that in place right there. Walk it on back. All right, and then we got our O-ring, I believe this was a 334 O-ring. All right, so there is your tube seal right there. And then we got one more that goes here. The O-ring that goes right here in this shoulder is not to seal oil, it's to seal moisture, rain, water, and dirt from coming through this crack here and getting into the threads and into the cylinder. So that's what that O-ring is for right there. And that's this guy. All right, there you go. Now I'll grease all this up before we install it. Let's go ahead and get the other two. We got our 575 backup. O-ring. We'll go ahead and just kind of work it to the back, back shoulder. All right, and then we have our tube seal that goes here. All right, there's that one. And one more. Let's go ahead and put our tube seal there I'm just trying to stand it up with the scale there so that it's straight up and down all right there we go there is our loaded glands ready to install onto the rod now we'll go ahead and uh, grease these things up before I install them and what I what I like to use is a tube of grease here and an acid brush I usually just throw this away whenever I'm done with the job so that it doesn't get contaminated with dust and dirt alright so I, I was gonna see the um, this is a grade 2 an NLGI grade 2 can anybody tell me what grade 2 stands for with this grease don't even worry about what the brand is just tell me what the grade 2 means okay so I'll just grab a little grease and I'm just gonna grease these these seals up just like that okay and we'll also do the same thing with the o-rings let's put a little grease on it and <clears throat> what that does that helps with the assembly it helps everything slide so that you don't have a dry rubbery seal that's trying to slide on the surface there you want everything just kind of slide in together alright so here's our pistons got them all cleaned up and then we've got our PS piston seals right there 
PS 1448, that's going to be our two and a half. And then we got this guy right there, PS 1400-40. All right, so now these are my least favorite type of piston seals, but I think these are going to be pretty easy to install considering that the groove is real close to the edge right there. And they're, they're excellent seals, you know, they have a high PSI rating, I believe these were for 5,000 PSI. Um, they're just, this material right here expands and it's, it's very difficult for it to fully contract it. It's not like Buna or, or nylon. Once it stretches, it's kind of stretched and it takes it a while for it to kind of come back into size. All right, so let's move a couple of those out of the way. And what I usually do is um, let's go ahead and put a little bit of red grease. You have an O-ring, which is considered the expander, so that's going to go in the bottom of the groove right there. All right, and then this is your actual seal. So this this uh, seals pressure from both sides. Put a little grease on it. That's just to help everything slide together. And I'm going to try to do it with my fingers. There we go. Having that groove close to that edge makes that extremely, not extremely, but it makes it much easier than if it was in the middle of the piston. Then you have to like push it all the way up onto the OD of the piston and by that time it's expanded. So you have, I mean you can use a hose clamp and a piece of shim stock, but they have uh, piston ring tools that you can pull around that to help close it back up. Alright, let's go ahead and do the, the other one here. I did not bring my <laughs> pocket knife in here today, so using the old Starrett to cut everything open with. I'm just sticking one side into the groove on the back there and rolling it around with my thumb until it pops in. And there is your seal. You can see it sticks up. All right, one more. We got the the bigger of the two. See that one's actually a little bit further in. It may be a little bit more tricky to get on there, but I think we'll prevail. I will say there's another trick you can do by uh, warming these things up, whether it's in uh, hot water or warm oil is the preferred method and the hydraulic builder that I did know when I was young he passed away when I was still in my late teens and uh, he had a he had a tank that was always on it was hooked into a receptacle um, that was full of oil and it, and it was always on so whenever he was getting ready to do this right here install seals he would throw all the seals in that in that oil and leave it in there for a certain amount of time. I don't know how long he would leave it in there, but it would warm up the seals and make them more pliable and flexible, and then he'd install them. And that's a trick that I've always wanted to do, and I never have. I've even considered getting a crock pot at work to do it, because uh, that would work just the same, put it like on low. Yeah, see, this one's going to be a little bit more tricky to get on there. Come on, baby. Oh, there you go. That'll work. That'll work right there. All right. And then our little O-rings, these guys right here, go right there. All right. We're starting with our inch and a half rod, and we're going to go on with our gland first. Making sure that that wiper expanded out like it was supposed to. Just like it's supposed to be. It's good and tight there. And we're going to go with our Dash 020 
o-ring that's for one inch there I think I'll use my good Armstrong three-quarter drive ratchet here. This is one of my flea market finds some time back. I don't even remember what I paid for it, but it probably wasn't very much. There it is. I'm going to give it a little extra pull with my pipe here because they were pretty snug. <clears throat> okay. This is the tool that I borrowed from work and the, why they anodized it in pink I have no idea. But let's see here. This is what I'm going to use to try to collapse that seal just a bit. That's it right there. So what that band does, and it's got a, a bushing here on this side, it it forces that seal back into back down into the groove and it'll help collapse it down so that it'll be a little easier to install in the tube. So we'll just let that sit for just a little bit and then we'll go ahead and stick it in the barrel. Alright, we're getting ready to install this thing. I think I need a little bit of oomph behind it. Okay. Got everything greased up well. O-rings, the seal, and including the threads too. That's where that O-ring really starts getting tight on that, that barrel. What we'll give it a couple bumps with the nylon hammer here just to kind of help seat the thread here, the, the uh, land face. That's good right there. All right, this one is done. Nice and tight. So the two small ones there, we're going to have to wait on putting them together. And the reason is these trunnions actually take a needle bearing, which I removed all of the needle bearings. He had said that one of these, when he took them off, the needles was falling out of them. So he, that's why he had that tape around them that you've seen before. And they were all trash though. They had rust in it. The needles were falling out. So I've got four new needle bearings on order. I just got these out today and uh, they weren't they weren't too much fun should I say I ended up having to um, pry the cage out of it and then what I did is I take a I took a carbide router burr and 
split one side you can kind of see where it just touched the bore there and once I was once I had it split I was able to grab it and pull it out of there all right but I've got those on order and they should be here this week and I want to I want to press these things in before I put the whole cylinder together so it's not quite as heavy so we'll do that and then uh, then we'll finish these guys up right here now we're gonna go ahead and start putting these two shorter cylinders back together and I'm going to go ahead and get the bearings in first. So here is the here's the needle bearings. These are an Ina needle bearings. And they are they take an inch and a half shaft, inch and seven eighths OD, one inch wide. And we're gonna we're gonna use the press. Make sure that they get started in there though. Just uh, just tapping them in there to start them and then we'll go down there to the dake and press them in there all right we got the cylinder sitting here nice and square I've got it uh, kicked up on this end just supporting by a block and I'll put this little 4140 pusher spacer right there that little nub will go up in the middle of that screw and I'm at the bottom of my adjustment there so we'll bring it down with the rim that thing is pouring oil out of it. This, uh, there it goes. Now we'll make sure we'll straight. This cylinder is in the desperate need of a rebuild. <laughs> the seals on mine is just as bad as the ones that was in this. And it's one of them things. It's never got around to it yet. Maybe if somebody will hand me a round to it, I can get it. Now I just kicked that off so that as we apply our pressure down, once it hits the surface there, I know it's it's even. All right, so there we go. All right, let's uh, flip it over and we'll do the same thing. By the way, Aaron, if you're watching, this uh, the press plate is working out great. Okay, there we go, got both of them in. So I'm gonna repeat that on the other one and then we'll bring it back when, we're, when it's time to install the seals. All right, there's our loaded rod gland. They went up just like that. Not really sure why they've got those spacers on there. That's the first time I've seen one like that. It's going to go up just like so.
to a few bumps to help seat the threads and it is ready to go and before we're done I'm actually going to tape off these bearings to make sure that they don't get any dirt in them uh, while he's transporting and hooking them up all right let's go ahead and do the other one now, let me uh There you go. There's your test. It works. <laughs> Careful not to cut it on the threads. Out here. All right, there we go. Barrel's got it. All right. We'll use a piece of my favorite tape, Gorilla Tape. This stuff will pull up concrete, man. I guess we're going to have to use two pieces there. We can use this little strip right there. I'm just going to, it's just to cover them up, keep dust from getting in there, so. We'll do it just like that. All right, there we go. And then we just need to, on this one here, to make sure we put our fitting back on there so that doesn't get forgotten about alrighty guys we got this job finished up so uh, last night Fernando had grabbed the the other longer one that you had seen me do uh, because he was over here working on the AC so the, uh, the bearings come in today and that's why these are a day out so got these things finished up and you know this is just to kind of help uh, share with some people out there. There's a lot of guys watching. There's a lot of people out there that have their own equipment, their own implement equipment, farm uh, tractors, you know, farm equipment type stuff. And some of these cylinders like these, you, as you can see here, are relatively simple to fix as far as the seals go with basic tools, you know, a vise of some sort to hold the cylinder. And, you know, uh, having a few of these kind of tools on hand is a great investment in your toolbox, just like a, a set of wrenches and sockets, you know. These don't cost very much. This is a Williams brand, but they're all the same thing. Martin, Williams, uh, you know, 15, 20 bucks for a spanner like that. Screwdrivers, picks. Uh, this is, you know, this is the first time I used the, the new Kit King uh, seal twister tool set, but I do enjoy having this, and I know that this will come in handy. It doesn't make uh, putting the seals in a perfectly easy job, but it does help get the seals in there, especially for those harder type seals, you know, those nylon uh, and urethane type seals. So that's a good investment to have in there. And of course you got your uh, socket wrench and different stuff like that. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed watching and uh, I'm gonna call Fernando and let him know these cylinders are done and i'm ready to get back onto some machining projects around here in the shop all right we'll see you guys real soon all right if you guys are so interested in this thing right here so this is a tool made for ptfe seals and this comes from hercules hydraulics this particular one and it's called a seal clasper and it's to help shrink down the ptfe seals after you install them on a piston all right so that's it right there here's the Here's the box. Again, I don't know why they made this in pink. This must have been the uh, basement machine shop guy version. 
seal clasper, PTFE seals. All right, and then in the Hercules book, Hercules hydraulics, we go to the tool section. There it is, right there, 99 bucks.